so let's let's talk about definitions. Let's talk about sort of what we are talking about here with suicidality and self harm. Um, a suicide is considered by the Centers for Disease Control in the United States. Um, uh, a death caused by self-directed injurious behavior with any intent to die as a result of that behavior. A suicide attempt is defined as a non-fatal, self-directed and potentially injurious behavior with any intent to die as a result of the behavior. A suicide attempt, as we know, may or may not result in injury. Um, so uh, the, one of the key pieces of this definition that we, these definitions that we're looking at here on this screen are that there's intent to die as a result of the behavior. So that is, that is a hallmark um, aspect of the definition of suicide and a suicide attempt, that there is some intent for, for the person with ending their life uh, as a result of the behavior. With self-harm or non-suicidal self-injury, as we often call it, NSSI, it's defined as a broad class of behaviors uh, defined by direct, deliberate, socially unacceptable destruction of one's own body tissue without the intent to die. So, uh, you know, we do know that people can be concurrently, uh, they can con have concurrent suicidal ideation uh, while they're engaging in self-harm, um, but uh, the intent behind the behavior um, at any given time when they're engaging in non-suicidal self-injury is not to end their life or to die, okay? So hopefully that helps to clarify that. Uh, suicide, suicidality, and non-suicidal self-injury are separate but related issues, um, so, so we do tend to treat them separately and conceptualize them separately. Uh, they are, however, related. One of the ways that they're related is that the longer and more chronically someone engages in non-suicidal self-injury, the higher their risk of, of attempting suicide does go. So we know that that, that, that uh, is a factor there, okay? Um, so let's go through some of the differences, um, you know, uh, here. And, and as we start to kind of differentiate between these two things, uh, these two behaviors, uh, let, let's go through some of those differences. Um, the intent or purpose behind the behavior. What is that? Uh, with non-suicidal self-injury, let me get my pointer. I really enjoy having my little spotlight. There we go. Okay. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, with the, the intent and purpose behind the behavior with non-suicidal self-injury is a temporary escape from psychological distress. Okay. So the person is attempting to cope, right? Um, the, the, uh, the, another intent or purpose behind the behavior might be to create a change in, in themselves or in their environment. Okay. When we look over on the side of a suicide attempt, uh, the intent or purpose for the behavior is to permanently terminate consciousness or end one's life. Okay. Um, to escape unbearable psychological pain. All right. So very different um, intents and purposes there. One thing we notice is that that on the side of non-suicidal self-injury, as I said a minute ago, the person is attempting to cope. OK, they're attempting to get a temporary escape from distress to create a change in themselves or in their environment, whereas the the person who is engaging in the suicide attempt is attempting to permanently terminate consciousness or end their life. Uh, so that, that is a, a, another difference there. Severity and lethality of methods used uh, with non-suicidal self-injury, that tends to be lower. Uh, now, there are exceptions to that where people will use uh, higher, higher severity, higher lethality methods when they're self-harming, but in general, it tends to be uh, a lower level of severity, lower level of lethality, potential lethality. With suicide uh, attempt, um, the person uh, is 
typically using a higher severity and a higher, a more lethal uh, method when they're when they're attempting suicide. Behavior frequency. Uh, Non-suicidal self-injury tends to be a high frequency occurring behavior, sometimes more than 100 episodes, often chronic and repetitive. We'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a few minutes, about the sort of how uh, non-suicidal self-injury progresses in people. Uh, but it is a high, higher frequency occurring behavior. Um, a suicide attempt would be considered to be a lower frequency occurring behavior, typically one to three episodes in, in a lifetime on average. The number of methods used, this is a, a, a difference that we see between these two behaviors. One with non-suicidal self-injury, multiple methods used across episodes. So we find that um, people will substitute methods, okay? So if one, if one method of harming the self is not available, people will, will move on to another method, uh, another uh, way of harming, causing harm to themselves, causing pain to themselves. Um, with a suicide attempt, uh, single methods tend to be used across episodes. Um, now, there are exceptions to that, uh, but that is, as a general rule, true. Someone's cognitive status during an episode. Um, during an episode of non-suicidal uh, self-injury, uh, one difference is that the person is distressed yet hopeful. Okay, like we said earlier, the person engaging in non-suicidal self-injury is attempting to cope, right? Um, whereas over here, with a suicide attempt, the person tends to be hopeless and helpless. They have a feeling, an internal feeling and experience of hopelessness and helplessness. So they have lost hope. They have gotten to a point when, when they're attempting suicide that... Um, they, they perceive uh, ending their life to be their best option. Um, Non-suicidal self-injury, the cognitive status, they're having difficulty implementing adaptive problem solving, okay? So they're coping. They're not coping in a way that we would consider to be adaptive or healthy or uh, that type of thing, but they are uh, attempting to cope. And with a suicide attempt, there is an inability to problem solve. Problem solving has broken down to the degree that the person, again, uh, sees uh, uh, the suicide attempt um, as their only um, um, path forward, their only uh, way to, to solve problems. Uh, the consequences and aftermath of an episode um, with non-suicidal self-injury, a lot of people report a sense of relief or calm. Okay, this can lead to a, sort of an addictive quality with non-suicidal self-injury, um, where the person uh, goes to you know their 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 uh, emotional and even physical state can be much calmer. So there's an, there can be an endorphin release that kind of goes along with the self-harm that actually causes people to uh, be in a calmer uh, state of mind. Temporarily reduce stress, okay? So the person uh, intrapersonally within the person may have temporarily reduced stress following an episode of non-suicidal self-injury. Um, Rejection and criticism uh, inter interpersonally, so in, in among people, uh, the person engaging in, in, in NSSI may feel rejection and criticism from others. You know, why did you do that? Why would you do that to yourself? That type of thing. Okay. Um, intrapersonally with a suicide attempt, there's frustration and disappointment. Increased distress. Person is now looking at having to face um, what, whatever, uh, they were, um, you know, looking at, um, and then others express care and concern. So, uh, those are some of the, the differences there with, uh, non-suicidal self-injury and, um, um, suicide. <laughs>